Put up your hand. All right, all right. And we also spoke about um, we are known to be distinctively God's disciples by the love that we have for one another. Do you remember that? Lift up your hand if you remember. And remember we spoke about service. We spoke about giving. We spoke about sharing. We spoke about forgiving. Remember that? We spoke about respecting Respecting your parents, honoring your mom and father, honoring your parents, your guardians, the people that have been placed in authority in your life to guide you through life, right? Respecting your pastor, respecting your leaders, respecting your teachers. We spoke about that, that being the God kind of love, right? And we also spoke about how Jesus died on the cross just for you, my friend, Jesus died on that cross so that you and me can have a sign of love. And that sign of love is the blood of Jesus, the mark, which is the blood of Jesus, which is on our foreheads. So that wherever we go and whoever we meet, we are seen by that love. That love that is represented by the blood of Jesus on yours and my forehead. We also spoke about how God gave us his one and only son, and that's how much he loved you and me. He gave his only son. I mean, imagine you had, you know, something you really love, and it was your lost one, your, your one and only, and you gave it away. It takes a lot out of you, right? And God did that. God gave his only son so that you and I can live today, and we can be here praising his mighty name. We also spoke, um, as, as, as we've, we've heard in church, um, that the mark, which is the blood of Jesus, is our distinction that shows us who we are. We are separated from the world, you and I. So quit trying to be part of it. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Why would you want to be part of a world that you have already been separated from just by the mere fact that you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? That says... That you are far removed from the things of the world. So why do you want to even bother yourself wanting to be like what you see on social media? Right? Because you are born to be different. You are born to be great. You are born to be amazing. You are the righteousness of Christ. Whatever it is that is right about Jesus is inside of you. Each and every one of you. So this is a series that we're going through, and I just want to recap the series so that you understand where we're going for the next four weeks, three weeks, because last week was week one. So week one, we spoke about agape love. Who felt the agape love of God this week? Listen! God's agape love is real, right? God's agape love is real. And we also spoke about the law of God. So today, rather, today, which is week two, we're speaking about the law of God, the law of the God kind of love, right? Next week, we'll be speaking about God's love revealed and made practical. How can you and I use it and live it in our own personal lives? And then the last week, we're going to be speaking about forgiveness and love, which is something that I think is so important because you cannot love if you haven't forgiven. Whatever it is, whoever it is, whenever it was, it doesn't matter. God just wants you to love and God wants you to forgive. So, let's get into today, right? Today we'll be looking at why God's love and God's kind of love is important, right? And what the law of love is. And how you and I can duck and dodge the enemy simply with love. You know you can do that? Because Satan does not understand love. And Satan does not operate in love. And the one way in which you can dodge the devil and duck the devil is by showing love. Living in the agape love of God. You need to understand that. So in 1 Corinthians, can we please go to 1 Corinthians 13? We'll start with verse 1. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 1 to 3. We'll start with verse 1. I love this verse. It's, it's actually called the love chapter. 
I mean, I love love. I don't know about you, but I love love. I love to be loved, and I love to love. That's why I just want to hug you, but COVID protocol must be observed, <laughs> you know? But love is just such a beautiful thing. And if the Bible has an entire chapter, a whole chapter on love, that says to you and I that love is pretty important, right? So in Corinthians 13, verse 1, like I said to you, uh, who received the WhatsApp about 1 Corinthians 13? Who saw that WhatsApp? Just a show of hands. Oh, so we're not checking WhatsApp anymore. Okay, okay. I'm a bit hurt, but you saw it. Yay! But you don't want to be reading the verses, right? So you don't want to say you saw it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask someone in the audience to help us by reading a verse. Do we have another microphone that we can have roving around? Just so you and I can get involved, right? Because you need to understand that this is a message that we are both learning, okay? And because we are both learning this message and we're both in a process of growth, we're teaching each other. We're learning the ways of the Lord together, right? So, and then he runs away. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm not going to make you read. Come, come. Please take the mic so that you can give it to someone. So, so first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask who would like to read this verse so that I'm not... Um, giving it to anybody who feels like they are too shy, but you should not be shy. This is the house of the Lord. This is not an audition, okay? You're not, we're not looking for the next idol, okay? Okay, there are already two idols left. It's over for this year. So who wants to read this verse? Quickly, quickly, quickly. Anyone? Going once. Yay! Please, will you read the verse for us? Isn't that beautiful? The fact that, no, please move on to the next verse so that I can have him read it as well. Isn't it beautiful how, I mean, even if you can speak in tongues and you can praise and you can worship, you are like the best praiser in the house. You are standing up there and you're praising and you're worshiping. But if you do not have love, God says, you're like an empty vessel. You are loud. It's as if I was banging this microphone, right? You're just a, a sounding, you, you're a, a, a clanging cymbal. Um, where's the drummer? Drummer, please, will you go hit a cymbal so we can know what a cymbal is? Go, 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 hit a cymbal. Quickly, quickly, run, run, run. Run, run, run. So we can know what a cymbal is. I mean, if you, if you do not have love, this is what you sound like. That's it. Bro, drops mic. Right? That's it. I mean, who wants to sound like, like a, a symbol, symbol, a clanging symbol? There's no bass, there's no snare, there's nothing. It's just a symbol. I don't want that. I want harmony. Like, I want the music, right? And what else does that verse say? And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, mm. I am nothing. Mm, 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 mm. I have the gift of prophecy. I can tell you what's to come in your life, right? I'm gifted. I'm blessed. And I understand mysteries. I can tell the knowledge of God. I know the Bible back to front. I'm standing here. I am the youth pastor at City Tabernacle of All Nations. But I have no love. What does the Bible say? What am I? What am I? Say it loud. I'm nothing. I am absolutely nothing. And though I bestow, moving to the next verse, and though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burnt, but I have not love, it profits me nothing. You can sacrifice. You can come and give when it's giving time later on. 
You can do anything and everything. You can even, back in the, in, in, in the Old Testament, because they had not experienced the love of Jesus and the, 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 the resurrection of Jesus Christ, they used to offer um, animals and all kinds of, you know, shed blood as a sign of offering, you know, because the blood of the lamb did not exist then. So they had to literally uh, shed the blood of lambs. Even if you go do that, but if you did not love, it is useless. God does not see it. Because what is love? Let's look at, at exactly what love is. 1 Corinthians 13 verse 4. Let's start with verse 4. Um, all right, before we go there, I need you to, to understand this first. Love is so important because where there is no love, and if I do not have love, then everything that I do is useless. 1 Corinthians 13, 13. Can we go there first before we go to verse 4? Let's go to verse 13. 1 Corinthians 13, 13. I love double numbers. It says, now abide faith, hope, love. These three, but what is the greatest? Say it loud. What is the greatest? Faith, hope, love. With all of these three put together, what is the greatest? Love. Love is that important to God. And now I will carry on with exactly what love is. Starting from 1 Corinthians 13 verse 4. Love is patient. We spoke about patience, right? We spoke about you being the seed. And you being planted. And yes, you are in the dark, my friend. You're planted. You're feeling like nobody sees you. Nobody knows you. Nobody recognizes you. Nobody follows you on social media. Let alone like your posts. Oh, you won't even go live because who's going to watch, right? But you're in the dark for a reason. God has planted you. God is putting you in the dark so that you can grow. Because seeds only germinate in the dark. And as you grow in that mushy, wet soil, right, that is uncomfortable and you just want to get out of there, you have to allow the time. Ta God has specific timing for you and he wants you to be patient. Love is patient. Patience is actually one of, the, one of the fruits of the Spirit in Galatians 5.22. You don't have to go there. We can stay here with love. In Galatians 5.22, the fruits of the Spirit. Who knows the fruits of the Spirit? Quickly, 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 uh, take a mic. Give me the fruits of the Spirit. Quickly, quickly, quickly. The fruits of the Spirit. Go, 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 go. Love, joy, peace, patience. Uh, ah, patience, yes, patience. patience. That's four. Can anybody else help him? Come on, come on. Hope. You can go. Hope. No, no, no. Hope. There is hope, but not in the fruits of the spirit. <laughs> no, no, you got it. You got it. You got four. Self-control. Anybody? Anybody? We're talk what are we talking about now? Love is? Love is? Righteousness. Righteousness. Right standing with God. Love is? What's the first law of love? Waiting. Waiting. Come on. Patience. Right? Um, righteousness is goodness. Gentleness. Joy. Peace. Love. Kindness. Goodness, meekness, meekness being, um, uh, what is that in English? Meekness. That, yes. Um, self control, patience, right? Goodness. Those are the nine fruits of the Spirit. You have to know that. I want you to go home and to learn the fruits of the Spirit, okay? 
That's the homework. You need to go home and learn and memorize the fruits of the Spirit because you will know that you have the Holy Spirit in you when these fruits come up at times where you need them the most. Faith, patience rather. Patience is one of the fruits of the Spirit, right? And the fruits of the Spirit allow you to be in fellowship with the Holy Spirit. So faith and patience go hand in hand. Faith requires waiting on God. We spoke about this earlier. We are waiting on God, right? In Hebrews 6 verse 12, you don't have to go there. I'm going to go through it quickly. It reads that you do not become sluggish, but imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Faith and patience go together. So God does not want you to become lazy, right? But he wants you to not imitate the people that you see on social media on your news feed. No. God wants you to imitate the people who through faith and patience inherit the promises of God. Who are you imitating? Who are you following? Quit wishing for the lives and the things of people who are not you, right? You need to know that earthly things are just earthly things. You need to understand that and have enough patience to say, God, I will wait on you. I will wait for my turn. I know that I am being buried. I am under the ground. I am in sluggish, muddy water, but it's because you have planted me and I will stay planted. So rather imitate those who have inherited the promises of God through faith and patience. Verse 2, love is kind. Woo, kindness. Who loves kindness? Who's kind? Is it easy? Is it easy for you to be kind? You have to pull it out of you sometimes, right? <laughs> you have to smile even when you don't feel like smiling. But you know what? Kindness is also a fruit of the Spirit. And one way to stay in fellowship, and when I talk about fellowship, friendship, you need to build a friendship with Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit wants to be your friend. And one way to build fellowship and friendship with the Holy Spirit is to have these fruits of the Spirit in your spirit. And kindness is one of them. Are you short-tempered? Who's short-tempered and irritable here? <laughs> Am I allowed to? <laughs> She's like, yes, oh, gal. Are you short-tempered and irritable? Are you edgy? Do you have an attitude? Who's got an attitude here? I come on all of you. I think it's a, it's a youth thing, is it not? Like it's a teenager thing. I mean, how? It's almost like teenagers are all raised by the same mom and dad because wow, the mood swings. Woo! Jeepers. We're trying to keep up, guys. Can you just relax on your parents, okay? So are you all of this? Do you know what it means? It doesn't mean you're any less. It doesn't mean you're bad in any way. It just means that you're not walking in love. And the moment you decide to walk in love, that is when God will show himself to you. That is when you will start having control, self-control. as one of the fruits of the Spirit. Control over those emotions. Right? Number verse 3. Love does not envy. Woo, sabawel, sabawel. Hey, don't we all? Hey, it's time for you to be happy for other people's success, friend. Don't look at other people and think, oh, I wish. No, patience. You are a seed. Okay, you're just under the table right now because God is working, doing a great work in you. Allow them to shine in what they have and what they're achieving. You don't even know how they got it. But I know how you'll get it through the Lord, through prayer, through obedience, through love. So what have you asked for from God lately? Because a lot of times we say, well, SBWL, other people's things, but we haven't even asked God for what we want. And you live vicariously through other people's lives on social media, wanting to know and keep up with what they're doing next. 
But what have you asked for from God? And do you know that what you have asked for from God is within God's will? Does God want that for you? You may want it for yourself, right? You want to be a musician. You want to be a rapper. I want to be cool. Does God want that for you? Hmm? You want to be a model. I want to be on TV. I want to act. I want to do this. I want to be an influencer. Influenza. Does God want that for you? Know the will of God. And how do you know the will of God? You get into prayer. You read your Bible. Right? If you, my friend, can spend an hour glued on scrolling, scrolling all day, friend, you can spend at least 30 minutes reading the word of God and getting to hear exactly what God wants to say to you about your own life. So have you asked for whatever it is that you want in prayer? Mark 11 verse 24 says this clearly. Are you genuinely happy for other people? Or do you have that, uh, I see it, I'm happy, but how I wish it was me. Quit it. Quit wishing for other people's success, for other people's answered prayers, and start making your own prayers. Okay? It's time for you to start making your own prayers so that God can answer your prayers. Because you don't know what they've been praying for. Now, verse 4. Love is not jealous. Ooh, jealous. Who sometimes struggles with being jealous here? Oh, all of you are saints, ne? Okay. Saints. Hey? Sometimes you, you feel it, right? And you're just like, it doesn't mean you're less than. It just means you're not walking in love. And that's what I want to remind you of every single day here. That until you walk in God's love, you will fall into the traps of the natural human kind of love. That is neither here nor there. And God's love is permanent. Be aware of your feelings. Your real feelings, right? There, there are the feelings that you want to show other people. And then there are the feelings that are happening inside of you. It's called the subconscious. It's almost like you are dreaming, right? So your mind is, has, a, has a conscious mind, which is the mind that uh, you use to just dissect what is happening around you. So the fact that I'm standing in front of you and you can see me, that's your conscious mind in operation. But the fact that you're sitting there thinking... Ooh, this girl's shoes. Ooh, this girl's skirt. Oh, this girl. That's your subconscious mind. You need to keep her and him in check. You need to control that person because that person will control you. And when you start being in alignment with God and God's love, you are better able to control your subconscious mind. That is your inner being. Your spiritual being is your subconscious mind. Control that spirit man. Verse 5. Love does not parade itself. <laughs> Here I am. And I am great. And I did this for you. And I did it for her. And you know what? I got her the other day. Oh, yes. And I gave a church. Do you know how much I gave a church? <laughs> you can't outgive me. That is proud. And love is not proud. Love does not brag about what it has and what it's done for others and for God. Love does not, it does acts of good and kindness in private, but praises in public. So I want you to start practicing that. Doing little acts of kindness and goodness so that nobody sees. So that guy down the street who's asking for food, you give him that money like that. So that nobody sees. But when it's time to praise God, and when it's time to edify other people and speak good of other people, do it in public. You know? Show people that you have the love of God and you walk in the love of God. Verse 6. 
Love is not rude. Love is not. But why are we so rude? Hey. Why are we so rude? I mean, these days, we walk around like the people that are around us are shadows. It's like you don't even see the next person. How about a simple, hi, hello, mama, hello, dada. We don't even, we don't even greet anymore. We're just walking by. We're shadows. Other people are shadows. I didn't see you. I'm busy in my own world. Don't be rude. Wait your turn. Be well-mannered. Be a good kid. Everybody loves a good kid. Everybody loves a well-mannered kid. Everybody loves a lady. Everybody loves a gentleman. And sometimes, in the smallest things, just saying please and thank you, you really express the love of God. It's amazing how, and I want you to try this. It's happened to me twice this week. Next time you see an old person struggling, run up to them and ask them, Makulu, can I help you? Dadomkulu, can I help you? You will see the reaction on their faces. The first thing they're going to say is, oh my goodness, thank you. Nobody does that these days. Because the truth of the matter is, nobody does that these days. And that is tragic. We need to change that. We need to be God's children and show it in our actions every single day. So love is not rude. And love is not self-seeking. Right? In 1 Corinthians 13 verse 5, God's love does not insist on its own rights, on its own way, for it is not self-seeking. So why then are you commanding and demanding? Why is it so hard for you to listen to your parents when they say no? <laughs> right? Why is it so tough for you to just do what is right? What you know is expected of you because by doing that, you are expressing the true love of God. And verse 8. Love is not easily angered. If God had left out the word easily, right? Many of us would probably have challenged this verse and said, love is not angered. And we all experience anger, right? But how easily does anger come to you? Is it sitting here on your nose? Yes. You are there. No. You need to change that. Step back. Take a nice deep breath. Right now, breathe in and breathe out. And in every situation, practice that. Before you react to anything, take one step back. Breathe in and breathe out. And then react. Love is not touchy. Some of us are just way too in our feelings, right? Everything. Oh, you hurt me. Oh, you, you have offended me. The love of God in you is not easily offended. Stop taking easy, uh, stop taking offense so easily, right? Because offense makes you step out of the love of God. And when you step out of the love of God, you take offense at church, and then you don't come to church, and then something's wrong with the pastor, something's wrong with the, the guys at the media department, um, someone said this to you. Relax. Love is not easily offended. Get that dirt off your shoulder. Please, right? Love keeps no record of wrongs. In 1 Corinthians 13, verse 5, God says this, and it's so clear to us. It is not resentful. It takes no account of the evil done to it. It pays no attention to a suffered wrong. Pay no attention to a suffered wrong. And that's what I was talking about last week. You need to start forgiving a lot more because the quicker you are able to forgive other people, the easier and quicker God is able to forgive you. So think about that. When you go down on your knees to pray, and you pray to God, 
God, please forgive me. Please forgive me, Father God. How quickly do you want God to forgive you? Hey? Who wants God to forgive them right away? Me too. So how quickly are you forgiving the person who wronged you? A day? Maybe a week? How about a couple of years? Hmm? It's been long, hey? You haven't called them, you haven't texted, you are so offended. They did me wrong. Let it go. And practice the love of God. In Romans 12 verse 19 it reads, Beloved, do not avenge yourself, but rather give place to wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine. What is it written? Vengeance is mine. Revenge doesn't belong to you, my friend. This is not street fighter. You know, I look it. No. Revenge belongs to God. Not to you. So stop trying to fight God's battles. Send them all to God. And place love at the center of everything that you do. Verse 6. 1 Corinthians 13 verse 6. Love does not delight in evil. Okay, there are certain things on television that you will not enjoy watching if you are living in the love of God. So tell me, who now is worried about what they are missing on TV? 8 o'clock, the river. 8.30, the, the, the stream. 9.30, the ocean. 10, the queen. Then the king. Then Isibaya. Then, right? Who, who has that kind of routine? It's okay. It's okay. Who has that routine? Be honest now. It's okay. But I want to tell you this. I'm in the media industry, right? And I know all about content creation. And I can tell you now that there is an agenda. There is an agenda to create and bring content that will take you, young person, away from the love of God. Just know that. And this is from someone who is in that industry. And as much as I love my business, I know that there is a huge need for Christians like me in the media industry to change this, to create content that is of God, that expresses the love of God, right? So when you are walking in the love of God, there are certain things that you cannot watch. There are certain things that will, will daunt your spirit, right? You'll be like, hey, what is that? But sometimes it's almost like it's jumping out of the screen and it's coming to you and you duck. Like, whoa, what just happened? Because it is actually jumping out of the screen. We are living in a spiritual world, my friend. You and I are spirits, first and foremost. Living in a body with a soul. The soul is the mind, your will, the things that you want to do and do, and your emotions. Control your soul. And protect your spirit from content that is damaging your spirit. And that is removing you from that endless, reckless love of God. And love rejoices with the truth. Love wants to see the truth prevail in every single situation. And the truth is embedded in the word of the Lord. Don't allow anybody to come to you prophesying to you without having a verse from the Bible. Do you hear me? Don't allow that ever to happen. If anyone wants to come tell you about your future and what, li what lies in your future, you must know that if they cannot give you a verse in the Bible that supports that prophecy, that is not of God. Love believes the best of every person. How easy is that? <laughs> In a world today, it's very tough, right? Love is ever ready to believe the best out of everyone? Everyone? So many trolls, and we must believe that there's something good in them? And that's the love of God. It's, it's hectic, right? Because how do you? God's love always believes the best about everybody. Some people may call you gullible, Right? You are just idealistic. I've had that quite a lot sometimes. But you should believe the best about every single person until you have reason to believe otherwise. 
okay? So don't take anyone's word for it. If they say, ah, that guy, don't trust that guy, you don't know. How do you know not to trust that guy? How do you know what the experience was between these two that made them not trust each other? Love, verse 7, love always hopes and perseveres. I love that. Hope, peace, love. And the greatest of these is love. Hope. Hope is what keeps us going, right? Even when things are tough, you're like, I really hope I pass, but I really hope you study, okay? And don't just sit hoping. Love never falls. It never fails, rather. Love never fails. In Matthew 5, verse 43 to 44, it reads, You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, Love your enemies. What? A little bit louder. Love your enemies. Oh, God. Are you for real? Love your enemies. Love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Imagine someone cursing you like, bless you, friend. But they just curse you. Bless you. That is the love of God. Do good to those who hate you. Do good to those who hate you. And pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. Pray for them. They are broken. You know why? Hurt people hurt people. Don't be a hurt person. You are healed. You are redeemed. You are of Christ. You will show love even when they show you hate. And that is how they will know that you are a child of God. So I just want you to walk in that. And I want you to walk in the love of God because Satan does not walk in the love of God. He could never. And that's why I want you to walk in the love of God and to understand that in order to obey Satan, to keep him at bay, you must walk in the love of God. Don't easily get offended. Forgive. Love. 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 And always keep loving. So bear that in mind. And I really want you, as we wrap up and we get out of here, to understand that God has great plans for you. God has such great plans for you. Don't take you being planted and being in the dark as the be all and end all, that is not even the beginning. God has not even begun to do the great work in you that he wants to do. So allow God to do that great work by allowing God's love to come into your life every single day. Let us pray. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, God of all gods, King of all kings, Heavenly Father, we come into your presence right now, Lord. And as we stand... Having done everything to stand, Lord, let's, let's get up and stand. Let's stand. Let's stand. Let's stand. And just allow ourselves to come into the love of God. Mr. Piano Man, please will you come to the keys right now. and Just allow God to really rain his beautiful love on you. Think about a time where you felt like you weren't loved. Or maybe you're feeling like that right now. Maybe you're feeling a little like nobody cares for you. Nobody loves you. You're feeling like you really need a hug. You need a friend. I'm here to tell you, my friend, that you have a friend in Jesus. And God wants to get to know you. God wants to love you. God wants to rain his beautiful love on you every single day. And I want you to give your life to Jesus today. And if you, if you know that at the end of today, that no matter what happens, you belong to God, I want you to think about the relationship that you have with God. Is it a relationship that is based on love? 
Is it a transactional relationship where you're like, God, I want to give, but I want you to give back? Or are you willing to be patient, to feel that reckless love of God? And so I want you to say this after me tonight. As you say to God, you want him to come into your life. I want you to repeat these words after me and really welcome God into your life. Say, Lord God, Jesus Christ. In your mighty name, we come in your presence. We want to welcome you tonight into our hearts. We want you to just dissect our hearts tonight, Lord. And I want you to make it personal. I want you to say to God, God, forgive me. For I have not been walking in love. Because I didn't know better. But now that I know the reckless love of God, I want you to operate in me. Dissect my heart, O oh Lord. Open my heart into two. And come inside of my heart. Live 